What's up, Twitch? It's your boy, Jeffy Control Robinson, and I'm joined by my indie director, John Carnage. Yeah! We let out of the pod last night. Yeah, man. I was in it. I was in that pod. It looked like uh, the thing from the fly. I was, I was in a flotation tank. If that's uh, Whatever. You're an animal. I know. It didn't make any <laughs> sense. You're tossing them. A story that's private. That's a private story about being in a pod, man. See, this is what we missed out in the morning show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but hey, we got some guests here. These are professional, awesome X-Men people, journalists, <laughs> fans, everything. <laughs> What's your guys' name? What do you do? So I am J. Rachel Edidin. And I'm Miles Stokes. And we explain the X-Men. We are the hosts of the podcast, Jay and Miles Explain the X-Men, which is pretty much what it says on the tin. Um, Miles does also does IT at Dark Horse. I'm a uh, comics editor, writer, and journalist. Um, yeah, so largely we, again, yeah, we explain the X-Men. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> because so it's about time someone did. <laughs> someone has to do it. Yeah. It's a dirty job. It is. I want to dive into a couple of subjects. When I heard we have some X-Men fans here, uh, er, professional X-Men people, excuse me, I, I was like, all right, a couple things. One, what kind of a fear boner did you have <laughs> when Apocalypse showed up for the first time and looked as crappy as he did? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So the thing uh, with Apocalypse is Apocalypse should not be a villain that you totally take seriously. He should be intimidating. He should be terrifying. But the fact is the dude has blue fish lips. Yeah. And speaks yeah, in does. a booming voice. Or at least yeah. he should yeah. all the time. So I wasn't too worried about it. You I really was, weren't? I was waited, waiting to see more. Okay. Like he should look a little goofy. If Apocalypse looks totally serious, you're doing Apocalypse wrong. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm mostly going to – I'm trusting an Os Oscar Isaac for this. I know he can sell villain at least, so you know, yeah, I think it's going to be all in the performance. It's like in the comics, how serious he is is totally dependent on who's drawing yeah. him. So, yeah. I agree. He's like he always had like a hilarious, like overarching, almost announcer bad guy voice. Like I oh, have yeah. now conquered yeah. the world. <laughs> exactly, because it's that level of confidence. Yeah. He knows that he can, you know, kill thousands of people so that only the strong can survive. So he's going to tell you all about it, possibly in the third person. Okay. Now, I'm a big, I mean, I think even this generation of moviegoers are pretty big preview people. Like, ever since Inception, I feel, well, even before that, but Inception was really the one where it was like, wow, that preview sold seven bajillion people on a movie. They had no idea what was going on, but the preview was so damn good that they had to. Now, X-Men Apocalypse ends, the first trailer, ends with, a, with, a sh with Professor Xavier dolled up in a chair bald. Yeah, yeah, he's finally there. Why? <laughs> Why is that a big deal? Why end on that? They literally cut to black and then show that and wow. Oh, it's it's tying it all together. It's the continuity. Really? Yeah. yeah X that's no, I, think, I think they're trying really hard to go, no, no, it's all connected. It's all continuity. Because, I mean, Days but of Future... But who didn't know that? Um, I feel like at this point they've got something to prove. Because Days of Future Past was, was basically all about reconciling the two movie timelines. And with this one, and like, I feel like they're just hammering yeah. it home, hammering it home. Yeah. Saving some lives. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I got you, but like, who, who, do you think someone sat for was like, <gasps> he, that's Xavier? Yeah, I didn't the know. The whole time? He's bald. He and he's in a wheelchair. He was walking just yeah. moments ago. Like, you think that's, that's crazy? That's what they're well, doing? I think if this, if this movie does it right, what it kind of will do is tie the weird, like, pocket universe, first class, days of future past, like very different take on the X-Men with the more traditional one from the initial Brian Singer movies, which, you know, they certainly had their flaws, but they looked a little bit more like the comic book X-Men. You know, you had your Wolverine, your Cyclops, yep. your Storm, etc. So I can see what they were going for there. Whether it'll be successful, I don't know. I mean, we're clearly getting some different takes on the origins of the X-Men, like Nightcrawler and Jubilee being there from the start. Yeah. Well, and anything, anything for fans, like uh, the biggest part of the appeal for it, or the biggest part of the selling point is of, often recognition. It's, you know, being able to go, oh my God, I know who that guy is. I know that thing. And so seeing the version you recognize can feel like a really big deal. Like when, when you know, the costume reveal at the end of Daredevil sure. season one, for instance. Yeah, that's a good point. So okay. I'm guessing that they were, they were trying to do that and then didn't realize that like classic Professor Xavier is just wildly anticlimactic. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was like, because I'm pumped. I, I think they've been doing a great job with first class and onward, I think. Mm hmm uh, retconning aside, which I guess, why, actually? Let's go there, too. You guys are the professionals. Oh, geez. Why? So we're talking about X-Men Because it's the only three. way to make a movie <laughs> that was originally about a teenage girl about the same three old men twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Days of Future Past should have been Kitty going back in time. Kitty should have been the central character, but Hugh Jackman sells tickets, so... Uh, and, you know, to be fair, he's a perfectly great Wolverine. I gotta give yeah, him props. It's one of those roles where it's like, really wow, you actually point. are Wolverine. Yeah, I mean, if, right. if you were, like, maybe ten inches shorter, he'd be Wolverine. Yeah. Oh, God, do you, so one year at San Diego, he was actually walking around in costume, and no one recognized him? <laughs> one, no. But no, one person stopped him and told him, you know, good Wolverine, but you're too tall. <laughs> oh. Like, this, this, that, this is, yeah. Wow, he's like 6'2", isn't he? Yeah, he is super tall. Wolverine he, should be five. Yeah, he, he's exactly a foot too tall. Yeah. <laughs> what? Wolverine's that short? Five yeah, he's, yeah, he's a little five, He's a Wolverine, dude. 
Yeah. Bro, he yeah. should be about as wide Wolverines as he are like is tall. Wolverines are like three feet tall if we're going to be super yeah, or, And they're animals yeah. also. Yeah, yeah if you really want to get into it. Very important yeah. part. What do you got, John? What I mean, I, I'm here hanging. I'm, I'm fascinated. You guys know so much. Where, why, why the X-Men? Why not Why oh, not man. knowing so much about Plastic Man? Well, that's good. What grabbed you? What happened? What brought you in? Now, we're going to have to change the podcast to Plastic Man now. Yeah, dude, I want to know about Plastic Man. I thought Jim Carrey was going to be Plastic Man. Right? And, and then the Plastic, plastic man, Baby, yeah. and then there's a Plastic Monkey, and all that Plastic all Family. <laughs> I might be the super fan of uh, you know, Plastic Man <laughs> and Mr. Fantastic. Start your podcast, then. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. All the stretchy people. Elongated Man, Ralph Dibney. Work him into. Elongated uh, Man? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a little That good. is his real that's name. That's crazy. It's adult content. Wow. Yeah, but why X-Men? Okay, so, um, God, there are so many reasons. I mean, part of it, I think, there's uh, so clearly much. Clearly, Wolverine is what inspired you. Maybe it's, it's, just all, it's just all the claws, you know? Oh. Furry dudes with claws. It's, it's, not be, it's not the fact that he's Canadian. <laughs> it wasn't that. That didn't sell you? That right no, there. No, although the there is, I actually met a comic scholar recently who specializes in studying and, like, the semiotics of Canadian superheroes. Like, that, the, is, that is her field. Who's another uh, Canadian superhero? Well, all of Al there's all of Alpha. Alpha. Uh, yeah, well, okay, Alpha that's Flight. it. We yeah. have Alpha Flight and then uh, Wolverine. Wolverine. Well, who else? Yeah. Baywatch. What's her name? Baywatch, exactly. Amla Anderson. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes, exactly. She's a superhero. <laughs> that's good she enough. She rescued dozens of lives. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, as far as why X-Men, I mean, I think the thing that resonates with most people with X-Men is the, whatever you want to call it, metaphor, the allegory, just looking at a population that's oppressed for whatever reason, and how do they react to that? Do they decide to say, screw this, this is never going to work like Magneto? Do they decide to say, all right, let's rise above this, let's be the best people we can be, even if we're not being treated right like Xavier? All right. But also there's just the simple fact that it's a really great soap opera. It's a soap opera with yeah. superpowers. You're, you're, giving, you're giving the nice, the, the why we love X-Men. The, the why we decided to explain it is basically... We love it, but there's also enough of it. There's like, a lot there of it. There is so yeah. much. Yeah. Uh -huh. like, and it's so complicated, and it's so convoluted, and it's so self-contradictory. I mean, we're, we're, oh, yeah. we're like 104 episodes in, and we're about 1989. Dang. Yeah. Got a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. so there's, there's enough. There's enough to go through, and people are confused enough that they will actually tune in to, to hear two weirdos talking about continuity every week. What's going on in 1989? Where are we? Um, oh, Inferno. Man. New York is being taken over by a hell dimension right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me ask you guys. And then Reagan saves us all. Uh, exactly. Would you guys be part of uh, the Hellfire Club, or would you be an X-Men? Oh, man. Uh, I, I'd have to go with the X-Men. We talk a lot oh, about... Oh, that's so sad, yeah. dude. I'm on that Hellfire Club, you know, bro. I'm burning it up. I'd be part of that team. You yeah. can technically do both. Angels, Angels both. What? Oh, that's Angel. right. Uh, yeah. And Sunspot uh, and Magneto. Magneto. There's yep. a lot of people oh, doing Storm. both. What are you Storm. talking about? Storm, <laughs> was, Storm was part of the, the, um, the Lord's Cardinal for she a while. She was half yeah. the White King. Yeah, she and Magneto were co-White King of the Hellfire Club for a while. I see. Yeah, you're getting deep. <laughs> 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 you guys Deep's are going cuts. really into it. It's I knew everything uh, about this. Yeah. You know all about all this? Yeah. Hey, let me ask you guys a question about... Deeper. <laughs> since we that's keep fair. talking about Wolverine. Is, is it fair that Wolverine, he's like a demigod. He's more than just an oh, X-Men. Oh, uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> is he still dead? Is Wolverine still dead? Yeah. No, oh, oh, Logan is dead. There is a Wait, new what? Wolverine. Oh, God. So the person who's Wolverine now is, is Laura Kinney, who was formerly X-23, right. who I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say is the best Wolverine. X-23 is the greatest Wolverine. It's a good been, run. Right? Yeah. Oh, a good yeah. run. Yeah, okay. It's a Excellent. really good run. It's, I think it's, it might be probably tied for my favorite X book coming out right now. Yeah, totally. Yeah. If Hugh Jackman's listening, I think you are the best Yeah, Wolverine. the boy from Oz is the best Wolverine <laughs> I've ever heard. Uh, of. Although, actually, the uh, 1988 or 89 cartoon pilot Pride of the X-Men. <laughs> what? Feature, it, was, it was a cartoon pilot. It was before the 90s animated series that we all know and love came out. It's quite a thing. It, there was only one episode. It didn't succeed because Marvel like ran out of money at the time or something. But, yeah, their Wolverine is inexplicably Australian. He's got this incredibly thick Australian accent. No, he no has explanation. this incredibly thick like mm. American doing a bad Australian. Yeah, it's like crocodile they knew. level. It's wow, unbelievable. That's they not knew. a claw. This is a claw. Yeah, you, much. Can, you, can yeah. Find, you can find it on YouTube. So. <laughs> that's it's pretty amazing. Uh huh. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, yeah. getting away from the X Men questions, then, just for you guys as journalists and you guys do your podcast, kind of what uh, what goes in your not necessarily day to day with X Men, but you know, in a week, what do you guys do with X Men? What's what's the day in life for you guys? So we've got two weekly features that we we have we both produce. Um, Miles, Miles, has, Miles has a day job, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a freelancer, so um, we, we are lucky enough. We have, uh, we're Patreon-supported, and it, the podcast and website have become about two-thirds of my job. You can plug it. Of that. What website? It's great. Um, yeah, so we are, this is expl explainthexmen.com. You can spell it with or without an E. It'll redirect. We got the other domain. Yeah, we realized that people oh. were going to mishear it pretty early on, so we just, we just picked that up, too. Um, so let's see. The, the every week thing are, are the podcast and the video reviews. The podcast... Um, 
we, we usually cover four or five issues. We read pretty far in advance, um, take super detailed notes every, every Saturday. We record on Saturdays, right? It's the last day of a con, just like a total fugue state. Um, <laughs> we go out to breakfast, we talk through everything, we go home, we write the outline. Um, we don't, the only part of the podcast that we actually script is the cold open because it tends to be really fast and really continuity heavy. So, but we have a super de detailed outline that we work from because there are so many references we have to make and also because we try to keep episodes under an hour and so knowing where we are and what we want to cover is, is helpful. Um, so then we record, our producer usually gets them back to us like Wednesday or Thursday, we proof them. Um, and then do sort of a detailed visual companion for every episode. We also do weekly video reviews of all of the new Xbooks that are coming out um, in any given week. So those are those we record, I think, on Wednesday nights, and they go up Thursday. And then I write those additional. Those are much less edited. Yeah, I write yeah. additional blog features. So I'm I'm recapping X Men Evolution right now. We've done interviews. We'll do art roundups, um, cool. stuff like <laughs> that. Right down depth. to the panels. Yeah, it's apparently a lot of people are really confused by the X Men. Wow, if there's this a is like the NPR of X Men up here. <laughs> you guys know your stuff. I've been around for a while. Uh, what kind? So. This is our attempt at a hard-hitting question. You <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> hit him. Hit him, Control. X-Men's had good content. Right. We also had some pretty bad content. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're fair journalist. You'll come out and be like, yo, yeah. this is bad. Yeah. That said, I mean, there, there, there have been some low points. Like, we're about to get to the 90s, which are a dark time for X-Men fans. You know, there was the animated series, and that was great, but there were also a lot of plot lines that never went anywhere, a lot of giant pecs and giant guns and giant pouches that perhaps the industry could have done without. There right. weren't giant pouches. There were many very tiny pouches. There were many tiny yeah. pouches. This is, uh, so cable. Is uh, cable. Cable, cable. Yeah. Although, oh, we found, claw, we found patient zero for the pouches. Huh? That, is, that is something long we have shot. accomplished. We have uncovered the patient zero for the pouches. It's long shot. But even with even with the bad stuff, and especially as we're getting to some harder stuff to cover, like something that's been really important to us from the start is to always find the positive. Because yeah. oh sure, yeah. X Men is it's fun. You know, it's dark and it's melodramatic yeah. and it doesn't always well, make sense. And the bad stuff is usually entertainingly bad. So earlier on, we did um, we we talked about Dracula showing up in X Men. We did an episode about Dracula. Wait, that stories. happened too. Oh, Dra Dracula's okay. Everywhere. Well, Tomb of Dracula is part of the Marvel universe, Dude, right? Yeah. So well, was it that guy? Was Dracula's, it Dracula? Dracula? Yeah, and okay. Dracula's in the public domain, so he shows up. All, All the, over the place. Um, <laughs> but we covered we covered his his old Bronze Age stuff. But we also covered Curse of the Mutants, which is um, mm. was that? Which is it's it's an amazingly um, it's it's a really really bad recent arc. I um, like but it. Also I awesome. like it. It's it's but it's it's really fun bad. Like it's it's ridiculous and it feels like watching an old like. I don't even know, like an old Hammer movie or something like that. I mean, at some point, and Iceman gets blessed by a priest, so his ice is holy water, and that's just Ooh. awesome. Oh, no, no. Dude, that my is favorite, so my favorite, cool. Right? I never even thought okay, of that. Okay, I love that conceit, but my that. favorite moment, and I feel like what sums this up better than anything else, is the moment when Cyclops just mugs straight at Dracula and tells him entirely seriously in context, I want you to follow your heart. X-Men. Like, Boom. this happens. A writer made that choice. Yeah. <laughs> I but guess see, they didn't know fun. at the time. And it's ridiculous. That's it's such a Cyclops yeah. thing to say. That's, I know, right? It, he, <laughs> he always believes, man, in he the good side of humanity. It. At least right. in all the yeah. movies, he's like he's like the subtle way of the man getting pushed down or something like that. He's right. like supposed to be like the, the high school quarterback alpha guy. He's like, let's do this. And like, shut up, Cyclops, you idiot. Let's uh, Cyclops uh, gets no I love and it's back. so sad. Yeah. I am so annoyed at jo that Jock Cyclops is a movie thing because Cyclops is yeah. so far on Team Nerd. Or should Yo. be. Oh. Yeah, I, I have really strong feelings about that. Have I, you guys? Well, that's good. Have you guys ever uncovered any mysteries? <laughs> any any questions that the internet is like, "Yo, what's going on with this X Men stuff?" Oh, we totally <laughs> did. Yeah, you guys are doing we it. We did. We have we have a big one. So we interviewed Whoa. Chris Claremont for our hundredth episode, and this is this is the guy who's like the father of the modern yeah. X Men. And one of the biggest things in his stuff is there's a ton of queer subtext. Yeah, uh, sure. Course, especially around Kitty Pride, and we asked him uh -huh. about it, and we oh. found out that officially and canonically, um, Rachel Summers, Phoenix Two, is the love of Kitty Pride's life. Yes, which so was so we, we got the official word of God answer on that, and I think I think that's the first time it was it was officially out. Like it had been in, in rumors all over the place, but yeah, he actually spelled it out on the show. Some mysteries solved. Yeah. Kind of along the same lines. What did you think about Magneto not being a rippling awesome Calvin or a jock guy? Um, I. That was the way cooler Magneto man. I feel okay yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine with that. I wanted to believe that he could not only crush me into a particle, but also punch my face off. <laughs> um, Those big Jim Lee muscles. Well, it's, a yeah. miracle, it's a miracle of magnetism. Oh, yeah. So. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you guys have no thoughts on that? You don't want, you don't want to move on Magneto? Oh, man. <laughs> what I mostly want from Magneto is like Silver Age declamation and asymmetrical capes. Those are huge words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I want a Magneto who is going to stand somewhere and just, just yell grandiosely and like, 
write notes in the sky with iron filings signed in neat cursive. Oh. Okay. And like to do it and again to do it in silent capes. I like your imagery yeah. a lot with that. I that's he did time, that in his though. first appearance. He that's totally that's did. what happens in X Men like number surrender one. Surrender Dorothy. Like basically. He, he writes a ransom note in the sky and he signs it. It's, it's, it's in it's cursive. Really charming. It's very, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's that's very Surrender off. Dorothy. Mm, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's Magneto. You know, of course he's showing yeah. off. That's what he does. Well, I'm okay with it. I'm just saying. I love that. But man, no, for me, like, you know, I, I enjoy the mustache twirling if he had a mustache <laughs> mm. uh, villain Magneto. But I, what, I, what I really love, I, I love him in the 80s when he's running the Xavier School. Yeah. Like, him going back and forth over the line between, like, trying yes. to have hope for humanity and just saying, screw this, let's, you know, just rule the world. Mm. That's where that character is interesting for me, whether he has yeah. giant Jim Lee muscles or not. That's wow. where X-Men gains a lot of traction for me, too. There definitely are black and white, this guy is a bad guy. But I like how Magneto, one of the central figures, is actually kind of complicated. Not always yeah. a bad yeah. guy. Yeah. He's, he's my favorite villain of all time for that reason. He's always sympathetic. Even when he's doing horrible, horrible stuff, you're like, yeah. you know, I wouldn't do that, but I kind of get where you're coming from. Maybe yeah. you should not kill so many people, but, you know, you're right to be angry. He made some valid points. He made some valid points. He made some mm -hmm. valid points. Well... Thank you guys so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. And you guys definitely want to check out, what, what is your podcast again? Uh, we are Jay and Miles Explain the X-Men. Is that on iTunes or how it do, is, how do they find It is. It's on iTunes you? and Stitcher. You can also find us at explainthexmen.com. Um, or what on else, Twitter. What or else on redirects Tumblr. to us? It, both versions of that, jayandmiles.com. PeterCorbeau.com does too. That'll make sense if you listen to the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Super Dr. Astronaut Peter Corbeau is the most important figure in the Marvel Universe. He is the most competent we'll man in comics. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, find us. Check us out. Yes. Thank you guys. It was an awesome conversation. And we will be right back in a couple of minutes with more content, guys. We only have 15 minutes, guys. And when people think fan fiction, sure, there are other forms of fan fiction. But then there is also two people having sex. Yeah. Fan fiction. Oh, Sometimes boy. more than two. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the fun <laughs> thing about it. It can be as many people as you can dream up, basically, from different genres and places. Um, and e even in our notes, they were talking about how, I guess, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey started off as a Twilight fan fiction. Yeah. Can you guys talk a little bit about 